Hello there, you welcome back to Baloli Lectures with Akiri Lee Oladimiji Philip. It's my wonderful pleasure to have you with me. So today we move on to food test, which is a curriculum under the GCSE, basically. It's uh, one of the practical, required practicals you will be asked to do. Not only for GCSE, anybody offering biology, food test is general for everybody. The only thing is that I might not cover all the types of um, food test, all right? But you get the major ones, which is which which cuts, cuts across every curriculum and all of that. So basically, why do we need a food test? Let me go back to that slide. You probably saw some spaghettis and some other things. I don't, I'm not sure what they are. But why can't we just say that's a carbohydrate, that's a protein? The reason is because in sciences, we don't assume. Science is not a field of absorption, but that of proofs and certainty. The presence of, the of food substance in a mixture is not assumed, but tested for a specific reaction. There has to be a consistency, okay? When we say this is a carbohydrate, how would a carbohydrate food substance behave? When we say this is protein, how do we know it's a protein? This is not an absorption. Because when you add one or two reagents, there's a reaction. Whether here in Nigeria, whether in London, whether in the, anywhere in America, in Canada, in Australia, the reaction remains the same. So we, we have to be sure that this is the same. So we don't assume in sciences, you don't guess. So let's go on. So the aim of this practical is to use qualitative reagent to test for a range of what? Carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. So to do this kind of experiment, most times you need what? This reagent, because we have carbohydrates, protein, lipids, basically, then we need this type of reagent to do this, to, to test for each of them. For example, Benedict is used for sugar. Of course, sugar and starch are both carbohydrates, but they are not the same, like in terms of complexity. So the point is we use um, Benedict to test for starch, Benedict's reagents, or Benedict test for, for sugar, I mean to say, the iodine test for starch, the emulsion test for lipids, then burette reagent for uh, protein. Please hear this part. Sometimes you can say um, Benedict reagent or Benedict test is the same, just the, the, like you mentioned the name of the scientist or the reagent itself. Either way, you can use it that way. For example, this one is called emotion test because an emotion is going to be formed. But what you will use to do it is actually ethanol. We're going to see that in the course of this um, series on this. So, but to do this, you usually will need a, uh, some sort of apparatus to do that. Use qualitative reagent to test for the presence of key biological molecules in a range of food. Safely use appropriate heating devices and techniques, including the use of Bunsen burner and water bath. Now, this is, um, wait, sorry, excuse me, go back here. This is the Bunsen burner here, burning there. You can see that connected to um, a gas cylinder. Then this is the water bath. Water bath is to create some sort of um, optimum temperature for the reaction. For example, when you are, when you are carrying out a um, Benedict solution, or Benedict test for sugar, it has to be kept in what water bath for about five minutes. Please, water bath means that the water gets hot, then the warmness of the water gets the content of the tube warm. You, you, you're not expected to put the test tube directly. That's going to be too much. That's going to denature the enzymes. I, I believe you know what that means. All right, so basically, these are some of the things you need to do. So now, you, for all reactions, for all, I mean, for all tests, you will need to do what? Break up the food molecules. Most of them are not going to be in soluble form. They have to be already in um, insoluble form or in crystal form. So you have to break them down using a pestle and a mortar. Then you transfer a test, you transfer it to a test tube and add distilled water. Almost all of this. For example, if you are given a piece of bread and asked to test if it has starch in it, you have to get it, I mean, pounded, you have to just maybe you have to blend it 
either way you have to make sure it is broken down that you mix with you mix the food with water by stirring it with a glass rod so let's check this out right now so this is the, the pestle and the mortar the same thing here you're just going to stir it together then you add this water to it when you add this water to it you're going to use um a glass rod well, the question is why are you using a glass rod? why don't you use a wood because wood can actually absorb some of the the fluid or the 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 the, 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 the sample so it might reduce your test results so you use a glass rod which cannot absorb that's the reason why the head of this pestle is made of ceramic which cannot absorb anything so to say so after you do all of that together you you you, you subject it to separation techniques which means you're going to add this into this filter paper so the residue the insoluble part will be held here then the content will go on there and you're going to that is called filtrate so the filtrate is what you want to work with the the um, residue is kept here so the residue is kept here i mean to say the, the, the filtrate is then poured into a test tube for further investigation so it is in that test tube that you start adding some um reagent for to see cause some color changes. This is very, very important, all right? So it says here, filter the mixture using the funnel and filter paper, collecting the, the solution, then proceed with the full test. So whichever one you are asked to do, so to say. So here it says, a qualitative full test indicates if a substance is present or absent. So if it is present, we say it is, that's a positive um, result. If it is absent, we say that is what, a negative result so to say now in this experiment it's very important the person the observer keeps his or eyes open all attention on the test tube because sometimes some color changes just happen real quick all right now observation are essential in this practical so you are looking for what color changes in particular which can indicate if a substance is present or absence so you can't afford to be distracted while this experiment is going on this is very 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 close overview of this so we, we, we're going to I'm going to give you the procedure one after the other so to say now the the test the reagent to be used here is called Benedict test for sugar Burette test for protein iodine sorry iodine there's a mistake here iodine then ethanol for lipids this is for starch this is for lipids now it's very important you know the color of this reagent by themselves sorry i made some slight typographical error here i'm so sorry now the color of benedict is light blue why do you need to know so that when there's a color change you will know it has changed all right the color of burette is blue. The color of iodine is orange brown. The color of um, ethanol is, or alcohol, so called, is just colorless white, like just like water. Now, what do you expect if you add Benedict to a solution, and that solution turns either green or changes to red or brick red? It has different. It could change to green. It could change to yellow. It could change to brick red. It has a meaning. That means sugar is present. All those green, yellow, brick red talks about how much sugar is present. But whether it changes to green or yellow, it just means sugar is present. Then, if it change, if burette, which is blue, if that solution changes to lilac or purple, it means protein is present. If that solution, which is iodine, is added to a, 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 a sample, and that turns blue black from orange. That means what? Starch is present. Then if you add ethanol to a solution and you shake it so much and there's a cloudy emotion where you stop shaking it, that means what? Lipid is present. So all of these are the indications to show you that lipid is present. But if it happens that the color remains the same, that means none of those food substances is present, so to say. This is very, very important, very, very important. So please make sure you truly, you can pause the video here and go through each one of these. So then for the purpose of examination, you are going to be asked to outline this, the, the, like the different stages of each of these steps, so to say, each of these tests, all right? So I'm going to see you in the next video.